Hello everyone, this is Iran Talk and in this video I'd like to take a look at a couple of Survive the Jive's recent Twitter posts on the matter of mass migration to the Italian peninsula during the Imperial Roman period. Now usually I do not agree with whatever Survive the Jive has to say but in this regard, particularly in the topic that I mentioned, there is a major agreement between me and him. In fact, most of my disagreements with Survive the Jive have to do with the Aryans who migrated around their ethnogenesis and the resulting Western and Eastern Iranic civilizations. Nonetheless, I agree with Survive the Jive where it concerns the genetic origins of ancient, medieval and modern day Europeans. In this video, I'll be presenting evidence in support of Survive the Jive's recent Twitter post on mass migration to Italy and also be highlighting the flaws with some of the replies he received from those who did not agree with his views. Please keep in mind that most of the comments that Survive the Jive received came from the liberal type, though in the case of Yosef Lazaridis, it was more of a Caucasian nationalist who attempts to associate the Indo-European migrations with Caucasian hunter-gatherers and Neolithic Iranian farmers due to his significant Pontic, Greek and Caucasian related ancestry. I actually agree with Survive the Jive's opinions on the origins of the Proto-Indo-Europeans and support the Kurgan hypothesis as he does as well. Nonetheless, in this analysis, I'll be taking a look at the dysgenic effects of mass migration to the Roman heartland. I covered this in my last video on the truth about the Roman Empire. Since I already took a look at this in detail, I will not go over much of it, though I will nonetheless provide as best as an analysis I can. Before I get into the analysis, I just like to say that these comments come in light of a recent study on the site of Pompeii which was destroyed by a volcanic eruption in the 1st century AD. This study, much like the 2019 study on Italian genetics through the ages, proved that there was a major Near Eastern shift in the population of Pompeii just prior to the eruption. Thus, these results prove that there was a major genetic shift in the Roman Empire in the period succeeding the Iron Age. And I reckon that Survive the Jive sees parallel in the shift that took place in Rome to the current shift that's taking place in the West with millions of migrants coming in each year degrading the gene pool of the indigenous inhabitants of Europe. For this reason, I feel that one of the factors influencing Survive the Jive to emphasize this shift is the parallels between it and the current shifts taking place in Europe. Now without further ado, I'd like to begin this analysis. Up first, we have this uh, tweet from Survive the Jive and this is the original tweet and you can see he said a new study on Roman DNA from the University of Palma has confirmed what earlier papers such as Antonio et al. 2019 found that the Roman Republic was built by native Italians but that Imperial Rome was swamped with migrants from Anatolia and the Levant. In my opinion, there is nothing controversial about this post and it speaks to the reality. Now Hannah Moots, one of those involved in the original study said, This is absolutely not what we said. We showed that before the imperial expansion of Rome, Central Italy was home to people from all over the Mediterranean. This may have been an important factor in the rise of Rome. For some reason, Hannah Moots is attempting to equate the rise of Rome to the migration of foreigners into the Italian heartland. Now in response, Survive the Jive said, Moots is attempting to typify Central Italy of the pre-imperial period as being heterogeneous already. Moving on, one of the interesting replies to Survive the Jive's tweet was by Yosef Lazaridis and Lazaridis stated, There is much misunderstanding about Roman history and genetics, so the rather disdainful post below is a good opportunity to discuss the topic. And while I won't share the rest of the conversation here, nonetheless Lazardis went on to attempt to justify his claims, though nonetheless he basically was stating that there were major Eastern Mediterranean and Near Eastern influence in the Imperial Roman period. For this reason, Lazardis was one of the other deluded academics who spoke against the original post made by Survive the Jai. Finally, the last of the attacks against Survive the Jive was by Nassim Talib and he said in short imbecile. So he was also calling out Survive the Jive but nonetheless despite the criticism Survive the Jive gave an excellent response. 
Now I'll get into Survive the Jive's response to the criticism. In response to the criticism, Survive the Jive stated, this tweet has attracted criticism from geneticists, Lazardists, and Moots, as well as an insult from med supremacist Talib. However, the thrust of my very short summary of two large papers is correct, that the Republic, especially in its early stage, was more European while Imperial Rome was more Eastern due to migration. Survive the Jai went on to state the caveats that I should add and that some feel I was being dishonest in not making clear include the fact that there were Greek colonies in Italy early on and that the easternized imperial genetic profile starts to appear in the 2nd century BC and was probably widespread by the 1st century BC. However, the Republic began prior to 500 BC, so really this doesn't disprove my point except that the Easterners arrived prior to the imperial period. In my opinion, this is an excellent response by Survive the Jive to the criticism he was receiving. And I'm certain many of you would agree with me. Now another European nationalist who defended Survive the Jive was Tula Tide and he stated, You found four outlier samples from the Iron Age slash Roman Republic, some Greeks and a Punic. Of the 40 published Etruscan samples to date, there are four outliers, three Punics, one Central European and somebody with mixed Italian-Armenian related ancestry, incomparable to the Imperial Era. I think this is an excellent response from Thulatide and he does well to get at the gist of the argument that was being made by Hannah Moots. Thulatide then clarified the reality about the so-called Armenian sample by stating, this is exactly what I'm talking about. The person modeled as having Armenian ancestry was just somebody from the Balkans who had more slightly more Caucasian hunter-gatherer and steppe ancestry than native central Italians it checks out with the G25. Thus, you can see that Thuletide is another very reasonable European nationalist. Now, Thuletide also made a similar post on his Telegram page and you can see that it's basically the same thing and I will not read it though nonetheless it's just good to show that here as well to prove that this man knows what he's talking about and he's very well informed about the genetic realities of Europe and other regions across the world as well which is very good. Now all of this is actually based on a 2019 study which was titled Ancient Roma Genetic Crossroads of Europe and the Mediterranean. Now I won't go into detail with this since I already covered this in my last video. Nonetheless for those of you who did not have the opportunity to watch my last video here is just the summary of the genetic events that took place in Italy since the Mesolithic up through the modern era. Here are the PCA panels from the study and as you can clearly see that during the imperial period there was a major shift towards the eastern Mediterranean and Near East and this was somewhat reversed in succeeding periods. Now on the dysgenic effects of the migration that took place to the Roman heartland, there was a study released last year and it was titled Intelligence Trends in Ancient Rome, The Rise and Fall of Roman Polygenic Scores. Now I won't go into much detail here but nonetheless here is the IQ chart and you can see that the peak of Italian IQ was during the Republican period declined significantly during the Imperial Roman period and rose again in late antiquity in the medieval period until stabilizing during the modern age. Thus these results conclusively prove that the migration of hundreds of thousands if not millions of Near Easterners led to the decline of the intelligence of the Italian population through history. Moving on here is the PCA plot for the Pompeian samples that were a part of a study released this year. So this is from that study and you can see that the majority of the Pompeian samples cluster with Near Easterners and a very few actually cluster with Europeans. Thus what this means is that the Pompeians were mostly of Levantine and Near Eastern descent and not indigenous Italic descent. Here is the same PCA but this time with the new Pompeian samples highlighted. So there were a few older Pompeian samples that we got from a previous study but around 12 of them were new and came from this study. As you can see, Survive the Jive is correct in his assertion that there was a major replacement of the indigenous Italic population by immigrants from the Near East and Anatolia. Now up next, I'd like to take a look at the genetic origins 
of the Iron Age Italic population all the way up through the modern period, primarily focusing on central Italians to prove survived the jive correct in his assertions. Now before I proceed, I just like to say my good friend Son of Manu made a video on the origins of Italian, so I've linked it to the top right and please take a look at it when you can. Here are the source populations that I will be using and you can see there's an Italic source, an Anatolian source, a Levantine source, a Germanic source and a North African source. To get into the analysis, here is the breakdown for the Iron Age Italic Republican sample set and you can see that these samples were on average 87% Italic and 13% Germanic. That's what's evident from these results is that the Republican period Iron Age Italian sample was mostly of Italic descent and had no Near Eastern or Eastern Mediterranean ancestry. This however changed during the imperial period and these are the results for the Italian imperial sample set as well as the Pompeian Roman sample set. And you can see that these two uh, sample sets were on average 64.5% Anatolian, 20.7% Levantine, 12.2% Italic, 1.8% North African and 0.8% Germanic. What is evident here is that during the imperial period there was a major shift towards Anatolia and the Levant away from the indigenous Italic element. This again confirms survived the Jive's viewpoint. Finally, here are the results for the modern day Central Italian. So you can see there on average 45.3% Italic, 41.5% Anatolian, 11.3% Germanic and 1.9% Levantine. Thus with these modern Italians you can see significant Anatolian ancestry as well as a bit of Germanic and minor amounts of Levantine heritage. Keep in mind that this Anatolian component has significant amounts of Levantine ancestry as well. What's evident from these results is that on a genetic level, the modern day Italians are a mixed population and only descend partially from the Iron Age Italics. All of this again confirms the assertions made by Survive the Jive and also Thulatide. To conclude, this analysis scientifically verified the claims made by Survive the Jive on one of his recent Twitter posts concerning the ethnogenesis of the Imperial Italians and the lack of Iron Age Italic ancestry harbored by the same Imperial Italians. What was found is that the Imperial Italics had significant Near Eastern ancestry particularly from Anatolia as well as the Levant in comparison to the Iron Age Italics who were of European genetic stock. Thus there was indeed a major shift away from the indigenous Italic population of the Iron Age. That's essentially it for this analysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.